Hey there, fellow explorers. Welcome to a quick note. Today, we're delving into the captivating history of the Americas, from the first indigenous inhabitants to the arrival of the colonizers and the profound impact on cultures. Don't forget to hit that like button if you're ready for a journey through time, and if you're not part of our awesome community yet, subscribe to a quick note for more intriguing insights. Hey there, when people talk about who found America, they usually point to Christopher Columbus in 1492. But here's the cool twist. Way before Columbus showed up, there were native folks chilling in the Americas for thousands of years. And get this, Vikings, like the explorer Leif Erikson, might have beaten Columbus to the punch. Leif set up shop in Newfoundland around 1000 AD, way before Columbus had his grand voyage. So, it's like America was already a happening place long before Columbus dropped by. Who discovered America first? You know, Folks usually think North America got the Discovery Party started, but some cool peeps say it might have been South America stealing the show first. No matter which side you're on, the pioneers who rolled into the continent, whether from Southeast Asia, Polynesia, or Russia, did their thing around 24,000 to 40,000 years ago. So, way back when, someone kicked off the ultimate journey into the Americas. Land Bridge and North America. Alright, buckle up for the Bering Land Bridge tale. Way back in the last ice age, when the seas turned into mega glaciers, they dropped about 120 meters, unveiling this cool land bridge between Alaska and Siberia. Now, here's the plot twist. Some brainy scientists once believed that the Og Americans strolled in through this land bridge. The old story starred the Clovis people as the first act, but hold on, they strutted in around 13,000 years ago. That doesn't quite match the real MVPs who rocked up about 10,000 years earlier. So, the Bering Land Bridge might just be the stage where the early explorers made the grand entrance. Let's settle the score between land bridges and boats. Archaeologists are flipping the script, and it turns out that around 24,000 years ago, the coastal vibes were just right for some serious exploration. Sure, there was a land bridge during the Ice Age, but the A-team of evidence suggests that the true pioneers of America cruised in on boats. And who can blame them? If you were on a journey from Russia to the Americas, the land bridge route meant a whopping 3,000-mile trek through Siberia. No trees, no food, not exactly a vacation spot. Even today, that route is a barren wasteland, and back then, in the Ice Age. Yikes. As one smart scholar puts it, imagine finding a corridor through a mile-high wall of ice for a thousand miles. What's for dinner? Popsicles. Boats sound way more sensible, don't you think? The comfortable route. Did the first American trailblazers have some genius food gathering hacks for surviving in tough spots, or did they just opt for the comfy sea route to the Americas? Picture this buffet of fish, oysters, and kelp, the sea's pantry full of goodies. Turns out, their sea journey might have been a smooth ride. With the Pacific Ocean currents doing a fantastic loop-de-loop, -loop, these early explorers could have sailed past Japan, hit up a few Pacific islands, and cruised along the Alaskan coast. Imagine, only three days max without a piece of land in sight, a bit like a mini vacation at sea. Sure, not the dream cruise, but not a disaster either. Three days at sea meant a quick fish catching pit stop, and they were back in business. The real cliffhanger is where they landed, did they hit the brakes in Alaska or go all the way down to South America? Every year, new clues pop up. A couple of years back, it was Chile stealing the spotlight, but now Mexico and the southern US are joining the archaeological party. The plot thickens. The Americas after the first inhabitants. Absolutely, 24,000 years ago is like digging through an ancient treasure chest where some pieces are missing. The real archaeological show kicks off post the last Ice Age meltdown about 16,000 years ago. It's like uncovering the layers of a history sandwich, and we're starting to get a taste of what the Americas were like around 8,000-10,000 years ago. But, hold on, we've got a 15,000-year blank spot in the storyline, imagine the epic tales we're missing. It's a bit like trying to catch up on a TV series after skipping a few seasons. Despite the gaps, it doesn't seem like the Americas were party central from the get-go. The real population jam seems to have started around 14,500 years ago. Scientists think the Americas were once as buzzing with people as Europe before the Europeans made their entrance. So, it's like the Americas through a late but epic bash. Indigenous empires and native settlements. The coastal vibes continued to be the hotspot for settling after America's big reveal. It's like a big nod to the boat squad. Arriving by sea seems more likely than trekking over a land bridge. 
North America got its share of action around 12,000 years ago when folks started spreading eastward. Along the freshly uncovered coastlines, tiny villages and chiefdoms started popping up like mushrooms. These settlements weren't playing hide and seek, they were packed with people. Living by the sea was the cool thing, and most folks were either sea snacking or busy with some top-notch hunting and gathering. It's like the original coastal living dream. Absolutely, it was all about the gathering and hunting hustle, driven by the necessity to fill those bellies. These early inhabitants were like local food wizards, knowing the ins and outs of the plants and animals in their turf. Just like many others around the globe, they couldn't resist the itch to explore beyond their home turf. It's that universal curiosity, that, what's over the horizon, vibe, pushing them to go beyond their communities and dive into the great unknown. The world was their oyster, and they were ready to crack it open. Who were the first peoples in America? Sorting out who wore the first to America badge is a real brain teaser. Some stories point fingers at Southeast Asia or Polynesia as the origin, while others swear folks sailed in from modern-day Russia. It's like playing detective, but the evidence for those ancient seafaring skills more than 24,000 years ago is a bit murky right now. It's like trying to read a book in the dark, we're squinting, but the details are tough to make out. N.A. Dean and Inuit absolutely, let's spill the beans on how the first Shoms made their mark. In the early settlement MVP lineup, we've got the N.A. Dean and Inuit stealing the spotlight. Some folks say they're like long-lost cousins, arriving side by side, while others swear they took different detours. The Inuit are legends in the fishing game, mastering the Arctic Ocean-like prose. The N.A. Dean, they're buddies with the Inuit, and the story goes, they all cruised in from the Asian continent or Polynesian islands, rocking boats like it's the cool thing to do. No land bridge drama here. A Navajo tribe member, a descendant of the N.A. Dean, gave the nod to this boat tail. When Cambridge University hotshots showed him a land bridge map, the Navajo said, sure, others might have taken that bridge, but we Navajo took the scenic route. Boats for the win. Agriculture and trade. Fast forward to around 1200 BC, and it's like the ultimate food fusion party. Farming communities, hand in hand with the gathering and hunting squads, started making it work. Corn, pumpkins, squash, and beans weren't just veggies, they became the cool kids on the dietary block, especially for Aztecs and Mayans. Now, let's talk of trendsetters, the Olmecs. These trailblazers were like the influences of their time. Not only did they have their farming game on point, but they also aced the trading scene. Trade routes stretching from Central America up north, like the ancient FedEx of the Americas. The Olmecs weren't just into farming and trading. They pulled out the big guns with their own writing system and math skills, using them to build epic pyramids. It's like they were rocking the complete package of ancient civilization awesomeness. Europeans explorers discover America. Hold on to your hats because here come the European explorers, making their grand entrance into the American scene. And guess who takes the spotlight first? It's not Christopher this time, it's Leif Erikson, the Norse trailblazer. Leif beats everyone to the punch and becomes the first European to lay eyes on North America. Actually, he one-ups it by setting up shop and dropping the first European settlement on an American island. Christopher who? Leif stealing the show. Vikings in America. Let's set the Viking stage, around 980 AD, these Nordic warriors, including Leif Erikson, stumbled upon Greenland and decided to call it home. Fast forward to 986 AD, a Viking explorer, not one to settle for the familiar, sails west and hits the Canadian coast. That's the European, aha, moment in America, beating Columbus to the punch by quite a few years. Hold your horses for Leif Erikson's encore, in 1021, he's not just discovering, but setting up shop with a Viking settlement on a cute little island off the Canadian coast, now known as Newfoundland. The name fits, right? And guess what? You can still visit this ancient hotspot today it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now, here's the twist in the Viking tale. Whether this was a full-blown, let's colonize America, plan is up for debate. What we know for sure is, the settlement hit a rough patch and was abandoned after a skirmish with Native Americans. The drama in Viking history. Columbus and the crew. Now, here comes Columbus, fashionably late to the discovery party. But why is he the one with the discovered America title, stealing the limelight from Leif and the Vikings? It's like a plot twist with major consequences for our society today. Here's the scoop. Columbus and his Spanish crew had a huge impact, and it's not just about finding new lands. The Spanish colonists, fueled by Columbus's journey, 
had a devastating effect on the native populations. They practically rewrote history in their favor, claiming the discovery and wiping out those who might say otherwise. It's a power play, the Spanish narratives became the go to history, and anyone challenging it was just a minority voice, drowned out in the sea of power. So, Columbus might have been fashionably late, but his impact on shaping the historical narrative was fashionably huge. The New World Christopher Columbus initially had a different game plan, he wanted to set sail for the East Indies. You see, the Silk Road, the OG trade route between Asia and Europe, was a bit of a trek for spice trading. So, Columbus thought, why not take the express route, sailing the Atlantic Ocean straight from Europe to the Far East. Now, Columbus was originally Italian, but he packed his bags and moved closer to the Atlantic bordering countries. He was on a mission to make that route as short as possible and needed some funding for his bold projects. Columbus's math skills were a bit off. He believed the Earth was way smaller than everyone else did. So, when he knocked on the doors of the Portuguese and the Brits asking for funds, they basically slammed the door in his face. But hold up, the Spanish royals, King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile, saw potential. They decided to roll the dice, provided Columbus with the cash, and the rest is, well, the history we know today. On August 3, 1492, Christopher Columbus set sail aboard the Santa Maria, embarking on a daring journey. After roughly 70 days of navigating the vast Atlantic Ocean, he made landfall in the Caribbean islands. The Santa Maria is believed to have reached an island known as San Salvador, marking the beginning of the quest for coveted spices from the Far East. Now, here's the twist. Despite the historical significance of Columbus's arrival, it took some time for folks to catch on. It wasn't until October 12, 1492, that people realized Christopher Columbus had landed in the Americas. Little did they know, this event would kick off one of the most ruthless and exploitative chapters in human history. Unethical and incapable. After his initial voyage to the Americas, Christopher Columbus made his way back to Spain. But the itch for exploration was too strong to resist, and soon he embarked on his second expedition, heading back to San Salvador. This marked the beginning of three subsequent voyages to the Americas. Columbus's reputation was pretty much a shipwreck from the start. His incapability didn't end with miscalculations, his leadership skills were a train wreck. Things got so bad that he found himself in chains, arrested for mismanagement and hauled back to Spain. The turning point came when Francisco de Bobadilla, sent by the Spanish crown, looked into accusations made by Columbus's own crew. The Spanish court stripped him of all his noble titles. Columbus, after facing such setbacks, passed away 14 years after that initial voyage with the Santa Maria. His legacy, tarnished by controversy, remains a complex chapter in history. Colonial Period As we touched on earlier, the indigenous peoples of the Americas cultivated a rich and diverse culture over thousands of years. However, with the arrival of Columbus and the subsequent increase in Spanish colonization, the indigenous populations faced a tragic decline. It wasn't because the Spanish colonists had some superior warfare strategy. In fact, many times, the Spaniards' efforts didn't match the resilience of the indigenous civilizations, who were intimately connected with and adapted to their land. The pivotal factor in the decline of indigenous populations was a silent invader, European diseases. Diseases brought by the colonists, such as smallpox, devastated the indigenous communities, who lacked immunity to these new pathogens. This devastating impact allowed the colonists to expand and continue their exploitative activities. It's a heartbreaking chapter in history where diseases, not just military might, altered the course of civilizations. The devastating factor in the rapid decline of indigenous peoples in the Americas was their lack of immunity to diseases like smallpox and measles. If only they had been immune, our world could have unfolded in a vastly different way. Now, let's talk about the colonizers' perspective. They often labeled the indigenous peoples as noble savages, suggesting intellectual inferiority compared to the colonizers. However, there's a twist in this narrative. Evidence points to the fact that indigenous wisdom directly influenced the intellectual movement known as the Enlightenment. So, while the colonizers may have underestimated the brilliance of the indigenous cultures, these very cultures contributed to shaping some of the intellectual foundations of our world. It's a complex interplay of perspectives and influences in the tapestry of history. The name America. Just like terms such as native and Indians, the name America is indeed a legacy left by the colonizers. It's linked to Amerigo Vespucci, the man who first realized that the lands Columbus had stumbled upon weren't the East Indies. 
The indigenous peoples, however, have their own names for the two continents. They refer to them as Abya Yala or Turtle Island. It's a testament to the diverse perspectives and rich heritage that existed long before the arrival of the colonizers. And there you have it, folks, a quick dive into the complex tapestry of America's history. If you enjoyed this journey, hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to a quick note for more fascinating explorations. Until next time, stay curious.